हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम टू ई पी जी पाठशाला दिस इज़ डॉक्टर राजेंद्र सिंह असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कॉमर्स शिवाजी कॉलेज दिल्ली यूनिवर्सिटी इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट मोटिवेशन आउटलाइन ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल इज लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव इंट्रोडक्शन कंसेप्ट नेचर ऑफ मोटिवेशन इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ मोटिवेशन टाइप्स ऑफ मोटिवेशन दैट इज पैक्यूनरी नॉन पैक्यूनरी पॉजिटिव एंड नेगेटिव मोटिवेशन वी विल ऑल्सो डिस्कस अबाउट मॉसलोज नीड हेर की थ्योरी एंड देन देर विल बी समरी द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल आर टू डेवलप कंसेप्चुअल अंडरस्टैंडिंग ऑफ मोटिवेशन एंड टू अंडरस्टैंड द नेचर इम्पॉर्टेंस एंड टाइप्स ऑफ मोटिवेशन वी विल ऑल्सो अंडरस्टैंड मॉसलोज नीड हेर की थ्योरी ऑफ मोटिवेशन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल देर इज इंट्रोडक्शन सक्सेस ऑफ एवरी ऑर्गेनाइजेशन डिपेंड्स ऑन द एफिशेंट यूज ऑफ वेरियस फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन फैक्टर्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन मे बी नॉन ह्यूमन लाइक मशीन्स एंड देयर एफिशेंट यूज विल डिपेंड ऑन द स्टेट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी एंड लेवल ऑफ कंपिटेंस ऑफ दोज हु आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर देयर यूज ओवरऑल परफॉर्मेंस ऑफ द बिजनेस डिपेंड्स ऑन द एफिशेंट यूज ऑफ ह्यूमन रिसोर्स टू performance of human resources depends upon two things first being their ability to work and second their willingness to work ability is a function of factors like knowledge qualification experience and so on one may be very much able to do a particular task given his skills and abilities but at the same time he may be lacking the willingness to work willingness is the quality or state of being prepared or ready to do something thus ability is nothing without willingness it is through motivation that willingness to work can be built in the human resources this will help the enterprise in securing best possible utilization of human resources now we will discuss the concept of motivation the term motivation has been derived from the word motive motive means anything that initiates and sustains activity motive is literally something that moves induces leads or inspires a person to do something or moves a person's behavior in a particular direction behind every human action and creativity there is a motive according to e f l brech motivation is a general inspirational process which gets the members of a team to pull their weights effectively to give their loyalty to the group to carry out properly the tasks and they accepted robert dubin defined motivation as the complex of forces starting and keeping a person at work in the organization motivation is something that moves the person to action and continues him in the course of action already initiated now we will discuss about the nature of motivation motivation is complex phenomena every human has different needs and they adopt different behavior towards the satisfaction of the same moreover behavior cannot be judged or anticipated as it is guided partly by emotions along with the rationalism thus individuals differ in their motivation motive behind a particular behavior may be different for different individuals motive behind joining politics may be social service for one and gaining recognition for other it may also differ at different points of the time for same individuals next is motivation is internal feeling motivation originates from within when a person feels some needs being unsatisfied he starts making efforts to satisfy those needs motivational forces are invisible which guides one's behavior and drive him to action it is psychological phenomena next is motivation is ongoing process it is a never ending process motivation process is continuous till the satisfaction of all the needs but human needs are unlimited fulfillment of one need leads to emergence of another need thus it is a process 
which remains continuous throughout the life of an individual. Then motivation influences the behavior. Motivation is a behavioral concept. It has an influence on the behavior of the person towards accomplishment of certain goals. Behind every activity and action of the individual, there is a motive. One's behavior in various situation depends on the need or motive that one is trying to satisfy. Next is motivation may be positive or negative. Positive motivation means use of incentives, promotions or other monetary and non-monetary benefits. A certificate of appreciation or a simple pat on the back may also be a positive motivation. On the other hand, negative motivation may consist of penalties, demotions, fines, etc. Next topic is importance of motivation. First is it improves performance and efficiency. Motivation directs the behavior of employees towards the achievement of organizational and individual goals. Better performance leads to increased productivity and reduced cost. Motivation is helpful in positively influencing the behavior of employees and they are willingly involved in work. Absence of willingness to work can spoil the ability whereas motivation converts the ability of the employees in willingness to work. Next is reduces labor turnover and absenteeism. Motivation leads to job satisfaction. Motivated and satisfied employees are valuable assets to the organization as they are more loyal and committed. Organization is able to retain its employees for long. Thereby, the cost of recruitment, selection and training is reduced. Motivated employees are more punctual as they would be willing to be on the job. All this leads to reduction in cost of the organization. Then, motivation helps in achievement of organizational goals. Motivation creates a conducive work environment where employees willingly cooperate and coordinate with each other to achieve organizational goals. Organizations resources are efficiently utilized in such a work environment. Thus, motivation is an effective tool in the hands of the management which can increase the efficiency and effectiveness of the organization. Then it improves industrial relations. Motivation ensures harmonious employee-employer relations. Better industrial relationships bring harmony and peace at workplace. Morale of the employees is at higher side which improves the discipline. Smooth and sound work environment is created in which individual and organizational objectives are accomplished simultaneously. Then reduces resistance to change. Employee motivation facilitates change by reducing the resistance. It is easy to convince the motivated employees about the objectives of the benefits of proposed change. Motivation reduces the negative attitude in employees. Motivated employees have better belief in the decision making process and they are more participative in the organizational decision making and implementation. Thus, motivation is helpful in creating such an environment which overcomes the resistance and facilitate change. Then positive corporate image. The organization which uses positive measures of motivation will have a better image. Efficient and qualified employees will be willing to work with such an organization which gives ample opportunities to their employees to grow and progress. Now we will discuss about types of motivation. First one is pecuniary incentives. Those incentives which are given in monetary terms directly or indirectly are called pecuniary incentives. Organizations satisfy needs of their employees by providing them rewards like increments in wages and salaries, bonus, profit sharing, leave for pay, LTC, medical benefits, etc. Monetary benefits have been recognized as prime motivator to direct employees' behaviors towards work. Monetary benefits are preferred more by employees because they satisfy security and social needs 
along with physiological needs. Pecuniary incentive may be classified into individual or group incentives. Individual incentives are given to motivate individual employees to work enthusiastically for increasing productivity and efficiency. Halsey and Rowan plans are some examples of individual incentive plans. Group incentive plans are designed to motivate group of employees collectively. They help in increasing the team spirit because their better performance as a team will fetch them some extra benefits. Plans like profit sharing etc are the group incentive plans. Non-pecuniary incentives. Non-pecuniary incentives are also very helpful in satisfying the needs of employees. Sometimes it is more important to cater to the psychological needs like eco and self-actualization. Non-pecuniary incentives are used to satisfy such needs. Non-pecuniary incentives include First one is job security. Job security is a great motivation. If the employee is free from the tension of losing his job, he will be more attached and loyal to the organization. If his job is secured, the organization can expect full contribution of the employee towards the accomplishment of organizational goals. Second is praise or recognition. Employees want their performance to be acknowledged and appreciated. Sometimes some words of praise are considered to be more effective than any other type of incentive. Recognition of performance motivates the employees to perform much better in future. Next is participation. Employees participation in decision making involves inviting suggestions, discussion and taking feedback from employees. It creates a sense of belongingness and loyalty among employees. They feel themselves important to the organization and work enthusiastically. Employees participation can help the organization in finding innovative methods of operation because employees are directly involved in implementation of the methods adopted and they may have better ideas with them. Then job enrichment. Job enrichment involves increasing the responsibilities, giving higher designation and providing more authorities. The jobs are made more challenging which make the employees feel important and worthy for the organization. Then career advancement. Every employee wants to grow in his career and organizations motivate them by providing growth opportunities. If employees are provided chances of promotion, they feel more satisfied and become committed towards the organization. Then there is positive motivation. Positive motivation or incentives involve rewards for better performance, increased productivity or any other contribution or value addition to the organization's achievements. Employees are offered incentives like promotion, recognition, bonus, increment or other monetary or non-monetary benefits. Positive motivation brings a feeling of happiness among employees. It is a positive assurance to the employees that their needs and wants will be fulfilled if they work for the betterment of the organization. Next is negative motivation. Negative motivation is based on sense of fear. Fear forces the employees to work in a certain way. They are given threat of punishment if they are not able to act in a desirous way. Negative motivations include salary cut, denial of increment or promotion, demotion or even layoff. Such type of motivation causes anger, frustration and dissatisfaction because employee work under constant fear. This may lead to unhealthy employer-employee relations and industrial unrest. Thus, negative motivation should be used very carefully and only in the situation where all other measures have been already tried and failed. Now we will discuss Maslow's need hierarchy theory. Need hierarchy theory was developed by Abraham H. Maslow. He was an eminent American psychologist, 
this theory is based on the hierarchy of human needs every human being has a variety of needs and human behavior is influenced by the status of the fulfillment of these needs at any given point of time some of the needs are satisfied whereas others are unsatisfied it can also be said that accomplishment of certain needs give birth to another set of needs human beings are always making efforts to be able to fulfill the unsatisfied needs maslow divided human needs into five categories and opined that these human needs have a certain hierarchy as far as their emergence is concerned human being is first concerned with the accomplishment of needs which come first in the hierarchy and then moves to the next categories of needs these needs are discussed below first one is physiological needs these are the needs which are most essential as far as survival of the human being is concerned maintenance of human body will be difficult if these needs are not satisfied needs for food shelter clothes etc are included in physiological needs category a person will first of all try to satisfy these needs once these needs are accomplished only then one will move to the other needs in the hierarchy given the urgency of fulfillment of psychological needs they get first place in maslow's need hierarchy next in the hierarchy are safety needs safety implies freedom from fear people may have different kind of fears in life that is fear of loss of job house money apart from economic safety people may also seek physical safety against accident fire murder etc satisfaction of safety need is one of the prime motivator for the individuals organization can provide safety to its employees by providing insurance and pension schemes permanent jobs housing facility or housing loans at lower rates etc then next is social needs desire of being socially relevant is always a motivating factor once a person feels secured against economic and physical threats next arises need of some meaningful personal relations being socially significant and accepted by others satisfy a person's social need a human is a social being and needs companions for conversations exchange of feelings and belongingness formation of informal groups in the organizations is the result of social needs of the employees thus informal groups have significant role in satisfaction of social needs of the employees management should try to get benefits of these kinds of informal associations rather than trying to control the formation of the same next is esteem needs after the fulfillment of social needs next arises the esteem needs these are also called ego or status needs these needs are concerned with prestige and status people want to be in command and power they want to be unique and above others it is concerned with their self respect self confidence recognition achievement competence and knowledge etc if these needs are not satisfied feelings of inferiority or weakness may arise then last is self actualization needs highest in the need hierarchy theory are the self actualization needs or self fulfillment needs once all the above needs are satisfied one moves to self development it involves realizing one's all the potentials and being creative to do whatever he can in the process one tries to bring out one's hidden capabilities and takes challenging tasks this is beneficial for the individuals and the society in large too here the psychological satisfaction is the primary motive rather than physiological and economical satisfaction very few people reach at this stage of need hierarchy next is critical appraisal of need hierarchy theory despite of general acceptance this theory is criticized because of some of its assumptions it is generally observed that needs don't follow any particular hierarchy 
Some individuals may be more eager to satisfy their social needs even if their safety needs are not satisfied. Human nature and psychology is very complex. Thus, it is very difficult to generalize any one hierarchy for all. It may also depend on some external circumstances where it may be easier to satisfy a particular need than other. Another limitation of this theory is its belief that only one need is satisfied at one point of time. Whereas in actual scenario, needs may be overlapping. At any given point of time, one may be thriving to satisfy more than one needs. Employees in any organization work to satisfy their physiological and safety needs at the same time. Simultaneously, they may be forming informal groups to satisfy social needs. Moreover, needs are not the only driver of human behavior. It is a complex phenomena which may be based on other factors like expectations, social and cultural affiliation and demographic factors like age, gender, etc. Notion of emergence of next level of needs after previous is achieved is susceptible. Some people may not be ambitious enough to thrive for satisfaction of esteem or self-actualization needs. They may be happy with satisfaction of their lower needs. Psychological factors may also affect the preference of the people. Over ambitious individuals may be more concerned with satisfaction of esteem needs. They want power, authority and like to be in command for which they may be ready to sacrifice their social relations. Social needs are not important for them. Though limitations are there, still Maslow's need hierarchy theory is one of the widely accepted theories which explain the human behavior in the context of human needs. It can be easily accepted that it is necessary that physiological and safety needs are first satisfied to a reasonable level before one moves towards the esteem or self-actualization needs. It is very important theory for the managers who are concerned with motivating the employees to work enthusiastically and willingly for the achievement of organizational goals. It helps the managers to understand employees' behavior on the basis of their level of need satisfaction. They can be motivated by ensuring the fulfillment of they are fully or partially unsatisfied needs. Now the summary of this module. Success of any organization depends on its employees ability and willingness to work. Willingness is the quality or state of being prepared or ready to do something. Thus, ability is nothing without willingness. It is through motivation that willingness to work can be built in the human resources. Motivation is something that moves the person to action and continues him in the course of action already initiated. Motivation is a complex phenomena which generates from within and it is a continuous process. Motivation is helpful in improving efficiency, reducing absenteeism, achieving goals, improving industrial relations, reducing resistance and creating positive image of the organization. There are different types of motivation like positive, negative, pecuniary and non-pecuniary etc. Non-pecuniary motivation includes job security, praise, job enrichment, career advancement etc. Maslow's need hierarchy theory is one of the generally accepted theories. According to this theory, human needs can be divided into five categories that is physiological, safety, social, esteem and self-actualization needs. These needs follow a certain hierarchy. These are the unfulfilled needs which motivate a person for action. Thank you.